okay, I'll record on this computer. Um, great, it's recording, we're on. Hi, Skylar, how are you doing? Hi, um, terrified, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> May I say it's 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 actually kind of cheering to see someone who still smokes. You must be one of the last people to to, to still be smoking. I'm quite impressed. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not a good thing, <laughs> but it was kind of the least of the evils that I could fall back into in order to uh, survive. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get we'll get up. We'll move on to that. Um, Skylar, can, can we just talk about, first of all, something's coming up very soon, um, and we'll use that to talk about everything else. Um, uh, you're, you're doing, uh, can you just explain what you're, you're gonna be doing over the next few weeks or months? Uh, well, we've been organizing what we call the ride, a woman's rebellion. Right. And really what it is, is a lot of women, trying to shine a light in the darkness. Um, I have found when I go out on the street, I always talk about this wherever I go. Um, and what I have found is that women and men both in America have no idea what is happening here. None. Yes. Um, they do not know that the word woman is being redefined to include men. Yeah. Um, they don't know that actually women are being redefined with some adjective cis that means we're not trans. <laughs> Frankly, I am not a not dog. I'm not a not tree or a not giraffe. I'm not a not trans. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. A woman. <laughs> and they are not women. So I just think they can come up with the term for not woman. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, yeah to be able to redefine us because that's not right now, now um oh yeah okay so what what exactly are you going to be doing you have a you you're uh how are you going to be protesting this exactly okay well we do have a website mm -hmm. um and it is the ride a woman's rebellion at weebly.com i do believe um we have a facebook group that is, uh, we have both a public and a private Facebook group for planning purposes. Um, basically, we are going to start on the East Coast of America and go across to the West Coast of America. Uh, I will be on a 900 Vulcan because, well, I love motorcycles, frankly. Yeah. And also because one of the main, one of the main reasons I am doing this is I have been gender non-conforming from the day I was born. When I was a child, I played with a Johnny Red Eagle rifle. I played with GI Joes. I hung out down at the creek and caught salamanders and crawdads and made little forts with them and then let them go and went home. Um, and what I found is that girls like me are being told they have to be boys. Yeah. And frankly, um, that is uh, disgusting and homophobic. Yeah. Uh, I researched this because when I came out a few years ago and saw what was happening to the young girls in our country and the world, um, I found that I think it was somewhere upwards of 80% of the gender non-conforming children uh, would grow up to simply be either heterosexual or homosexual or whatever. Um, but they're not no. confused about their sex. Uh, I have found that there, what has happened, and frankly, I know it sounds bad, but there is a cult under the guise of a civil rights movement. Yeah. Um, and this civil rights so-called movement um, is in our schools and they're teaching our children they can be in the wrong body. Yeah, yeah. Nobody is in the wrong body. <laughs> we are what we are. <laughs> I, um, it's a particularly American phenomenon as well. I think this was born in America and it comes out of a, uh, 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 it seems to me it comes out of a culture that doesn't have uh, 
free healthcare and where you uh, plastic surgeons make a lot of money, um, pharmaceutical companies make a lot of money. I don't think it's any coincidence that this uh, uh, trend started in the States. Oh, I don't either. There is so much money backing this thing. The pharmaceutical lobby is probably the largest lobby in Washington. Yes. And that is just massive amounts of money being thrown at Vulnerable. making children into lifelong medical patients. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask, um, sorry, were you going to go on something? Well, frankly, Lupron is an end-of-life prostate cancer drug. Yes. It was never approved to stop puberty. It was approved for precocious pu puberty, but not to just stop people's puberty for years at a time. Um, and puberty is not a disease. <laughs> it is a natural part of the body's growth. And when you stop puberty, you destroy these children. Yes. And puberty is also uh, one of the main cures for dysphoria. You know, most uh, most kids who go through puberty uh, de desist. Um, uh, so it's outrageous that it's being portrayed as a um, as a as a cure for something that it actually arrests and it freezes kids in a kind of uh, you know mentally. Uh, 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 arrested state, you know, it's it's really frightening. But but let's let's move on to that in a sec. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, you uh, because you came out. You said just there that you came out just a few years ago. That's quite a late late blooming lesbian, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, uh, why what what? So, <laughs> really uh, think to come out at fifty eight years old? I'm telling you right now. Yeah, coming out at fifty eight is not. Mm, that just I was frankly for the first year I was furious at myself yes. at myself I was so furious at myself but then I had to someone reminded me that I couldn't know what I didn't know mm -hmm. yes and when I finally did figure out that all my life I was simply a lesbian um I'm always I've always been a what you see is what you get person it's just who I am. Sure. I don't know where that comes from, don't care. But when I figured out I was a lesbian, the first thing I did was tell everybody, you know, hey, guess what? I figured out I was a lesbian. <laughs> yeah. The first thing my mother said to me was, don't put a target on your back. Mm. Well, you know, the first thing I did was get on a motorcycle, drive three hours to Atlanta, yeah. and ride my motorcycle with dykes on bikes in the parade for pride. Yeah. But that wasn't the real target. The real target comes from within our own so-called community. You mean you mean you were targeted from within the LGBT movement? Lesbians are. Um, what I found, okay, I joined Dykes on bikes yeah. because I'm a bike on a bike. <laughs> okay. Sure. So you know, I thought, you know, I'll join Dykes on bikes. They were debating, and I was a new, newly out lesbian, they were debating no turf flags for the next Pride Parade in Atlanta. Mm. I didn't know what a turf was. Yeah. So of course, I asked questions. I still didn't understand until I went to World Pride and then got back home and realized that actual lesbians, like me, that will never want a man again, whether they wear lipstick and a dress or not, mm -hmm. were Terps. Yeah. So then what I realized, and frankly, I cried like a baby um, because I cry a lot, but I realized that as a dyke on a bike, I am excluded from dykes on bikes mm -hmm. so that they can be inclusive of men. Yeah, yeah. That is a travesty. It's an extraordinary situation. And the thing that really, the thing that I love about uh, you, Skylar, is that you think you're thinking of the, the kids who can't say anything, the girls who can't say anything, 
because I think if you're a young lesbian at the moment, if you speak out about this, you risk being socially ostracized, uh, losing work. So it's, it's wonderful to see um, older lesbians like yourself standing up for those young people. Well, when I came out at 58, I had lived all of my life in compulsory heterosexuality. Because of that, my first marriage was extremely abusive yeah. for uh, over seven years. And so I recognize the, the tools that they use, the circle of control and power for domestic violence and sexual violence. They use every single part of that to control us. Yeah. Um, and it's abusive. And that was the thing. Um, it helped me to recognize that the LGBTQIA plus whatever is in an abusive relationship with lesbians, gays, and bisexuals. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is the most homophobic movement I have ever seen in my life. And frankly, my birth family, some of them are evangelical Christians. Yes. That honest, they, and they honestly believe that I am going to uh, hell. <laughs> um, but see, the thing is, here's the difference. My family loves me. They're terrified that I'm going to go to hell <laughs> because of the beliefs. Yeah. And that is terrible for them. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe in that religion. Yeah. So that means I don't believe in that hell. But the thing is, the religious right, you know, may think that we're, you know, going to burn in hell, but they're not trying to put us in hell right now. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. And yeah. frankly, the religious left yeah. is putting us in hell. Oh, man, you know what? I never thought of that. I never thought of that, Skylar. Calling them the religious left is perfect. That's exactly what they are, because they believe in the... Uh, uh, the religion that tr uh, transforms men into women, women into men, in a kind of a magical way. <laughs> you know? Believe in a gendered soul. Yes, yes, exactly. And I do not believe in their religion either. And, and another difference between them and the religious right, I would say, is that in religion, they have the concept of forgiveness. There's no such concept amongst the religious left. You know, yeah, we keep hearing. Oh, just for the record, I was on Twitter yesterday and someone posted up a thing about how the LGBTQIA, whatever, um, is all about, and that's why they put up the signs choose love. Yeah, my response was simply, quote unquote, choose love. The link to turf is a slur.com, yeah, 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 absolutely. And this is not love as I know it, yeah, yeah. Can I, can I ask, Skylar, when you went to the, um, uh, to that Pride March, um, I think you told me once that you were in a, uh, you were in a, 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 some sort of conference or something, and you started asking questions. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, um, I went to uh, World Pride in New York City for two weeks. And I was so excited because I figured I could learn a lot there because I'm a newly out lesbian. I don't have a clue, right? Yeah. I'm all about the data. So at World Pride, they had a two day conference, a uh, human rights conference from nine to five for two days. And it really was a good conference. Mm. Um, the problem that I had was they had a her story session. And I signed up for this session, so excited to see lesbians talking about her story. Yeah. You know, because I wanted to learn some. Yeah. Well, I, at the time I was in a wheelchair, I rolled my wheelchair in there and there were three gay men and a trans identified male on the panel for the lesbian her story session. Wow. Not one lesbian on the her story panel at the human rights conference in New York City at World Pride. Not one, not one lesbian. That's amazing. I think that, I think there might be something similar going on at TEDx this year. I think there's a woman's session that doesn't have a single woman on it. 
you know. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so anyway, you went to the conference. I would like to say this. I think it's important that the, that, that the world hears it. Yeah. Um, at, at that particular session and halfway through it, the trans identified male said, I wait for the day that everyone is either trans identified or gender fluid. And frankly, that is what they want. Mm -hmm. They don't care if you're heterosexual or homosexual people. If you're not pansexual, you're a bigot. Yeah, yeah. In fact, actually, Rachel McKinnon, the uh, famous cheat, um, actually said that uh, said that uh, to a gay man. There's a there's a guy over here. His name is uh, Adrian Harrop, and uh, and he actually said pansexuality is the only moral sexual sexuality <laughs> to a gay man. And the gay guy uh, Harrop eventually agreed with him. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's just, no. <laughs> Sorry? I said gaslighting 101. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, yeah. man, he has to accept the woman gaslighting 101. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, at the conference, uh, what did, did you um, ask questions or? Oh, um, actually, um, they did have a question and answer time at the end. And I was shaking like a leaf. I'm doing pretty good at the moment. <laughs> uh, but I said, I, I, um, I don't have a question, but I do have a response to a comment. I am not trans. I am not gender fluid. I am a lesbian. And I do not want the L to be erased. Mm -hmm. And lesbians should be able to support everyone without having to change our sexuality for them. Yeah. You know, we've had this all our lives. Lesbians have been told all our lives that our sexuality is wrong. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that makes it where people like me don't even manage to come out until we're 58 freaking years old. I know, I know. I been, if I will finally get the courage to tell the world I'm a lesbian just to be told I'm supposed to accept men. Yeah. That's not gonna happen, people. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I heard, I heard Skylar, you, you may, you may uh, know the truth of this. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's true, but apparently there are no lesbian spaces left in California. There's, they all admit men, you know? Trans-identified men. I don't know about California specifically, but what I do know is that people are crazy if they think lesbians aren't going to have our spaces in secret without your knowledge. <laughs> yeah. You know, if yeah. You, if the men are going to harass us, the women are going to get together and make safe spaces, and we have. They're all over the country. Good. Good. I hope so. They are. There are women maintaining women's lands all over this country. People just don't know where they are. Yeah, yeah. And, and they won't unless they're a woman that needs to go there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, uh, so what was, the re what was the response at that conference? You know, was, did, you, did you get applause? Did you get um, uh, thrown out? I think it was helpful, <laughs> frankly that I was an old woman in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> because I actually did get applause for that. Um, at the time, I did not know that what I was saying was um, supposedly a bad thing. I had no idea, frankly. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, when I was in New York, I was around so many trans ID people. And I just loved them. I, did go, I got along with them fine. Yeah. It wasn't until I asked one question about boys and girls sports that all of a sudden I was the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Where did you where did you ask that question? On Facebook. Okay, okay, yeah. I friended all these people while I was in New York. I had, of course, friended all these people that I met. I was there for two weeks. I met a ton of people, so I friended people on Facebook. 
And then when they read my questions, the two responses I got were either to make me feel guilty. I thought you understood. Yeah. Well, I understand that you're not comfortable in your body, that you're more comfortable representing as a female. And I had no problem with that. I still don't. No, no one does. You know, somebody said, if trans identified men would stop trying to get into women's spaces in sports, yeah. it would be amazing how fast everyone would stop caring that yeah. they are transgender men. Exactly, exactly. But I would add, to, I would say actually that judging by the behavior of some of the worst uh, trans identified trolls on Twitter, uh, I think it's a power thing. I think it's a, a dominance thing for some people. They like getting women thrown off Twitter. They like uh, closing down women's spaces, getting politicians fired. You know, I think there's a lot, I think especially AGP men, I think that, I think being AGP, uh, uh, you know, is particularly is you know, there's there's definitely exceptions. Debbie Hayton over here uh, admits to being AGP and is is just lovely. Uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of um, uh, I would say a kind of abusive mentality amongst a lot of AGP men, you know, and it's definitely a power thing. Though there are there are quite a few transsexual men that support women and i want to make a shout out to them thank you um respect all day long uh when one trans id male took a picture of himself in the men's room yes. in a magnificent magnificent dress i mean <laughs> yeah awesome. and it says you know hey i'm in the men's room i'm not getting hassled yeah yeah you know yeah. I have yet to see an example of a trans ID male being attacked in the men's room. I haven't, I've not seen one. No. And women are supposed to be shields for these men. We're supposed to let them in the women's room so that men won't attack them. Women are not responsible for men being violent to men. Yes. Yeah. We're not caretakers. Also, we why do they get to be scared of men? Why do they get to be scared of men? But women don't get to be scared of men because, you know, and the, re and the answer they give is because trans women are women as if those words just create a magic kind of spell that makes these trans identified people completely innocent. It's not true. Some will be and some will be, will, will, won't be. We know, we know, like, look at all the abuse, all the vicious death and rape threats that JK Rowling got. Why should women accept those types of people into their into their private spaces. It's an outrageous ask. <laughs> I, would, I would like to say that one in three women on this planet experience either being beaten, raped, or sexually assaulted. One in three. That's a horrible statistic, yeah. Is a woman that has survived multiple rapes and gang rape. Sorry, Scott, I you say you, you are? Yes. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm past it. I'm old. That's a long time ago. Okay. Um, but I also have CPTSD. Yeah. And if I am in my shower at the local gym and a man walks in with male parts hanging out. Yeah. That is not acceptable. And there was a man that said that I should actually walk up to one of these men and talk to him. And my response was this, picture a woman walking up to you and shooting you in the dick with a Glock. <laughs> you survive it and a few years later, you're in your shower and a woman walks in with a Glock. <laughs> are you going to talk to that woman or are you going to disarm her? Yeah, yeah. That's a great, women, that's a great point. Women have a right to not have men in our bathrooms, our showers, our prisons, our rape shelters, our domestic violence shelters. We have that right. Yeah. And uh, frankly, uh, there are enough women out there 
that we'll defend ourselves. Yeah. Well, let's you know, be careful. Le- Posey got into trouble recently talking about this, so let's let's be careful. <laughs> but but it is true. I don't think that people. I mean, Posey's uh, case. If I might bring that up, because it's been the subject subject of a bit of chatter recently. But uh, Posey got into trouble for, I guess, I I would say unwisely um, uh, talking about men protecting women in in public toilets with guns and stuff like that. And, you know, there's two things I think about that. The first thing is our side is so heavily policed that any mistake or slip up gets greeted with a barrage of of abuse. And we are subject to such stringent controls on our behavior and our language. I, I, I don't think it was a wise thing for Posey to say, but at the same time, I've been a bit disturbed by the speed with which people have condemned her. You know, it's, it's, we should be allowed to make mistakes, to say silly things, to take them back. Posey took the video down. Um, so, but there is a real, there is a real, she had, there, behind what she said, there I think is the, there's a strong point, which is, which is, as again, to bring up the uh, death and rape, death and rape threats that JK Rowling got, like, like, of course women are going to feel scared. Shout out to Magdalene Burns, please. Sorry, say that again. Speaking of threats, let's put out a shout out to the great <laughs> Magdalene Burns. Yeah, yeah. I will tell you that she was the first one. I came across one of her videos and it was, oh my gosh, it was just weeks, actually, frankly, it was weeks before she died. Oh. And I came across one and I binge watched her videos yeah. for two days, you know? So if anyone really wants to understand the effect of, of gender ID on lesbians, go to Magdalene Burns videos. Oh, and I also, there's a couple of things I want to make a shout to. 11th Hour Blog. Okay. Jennifer Billick. Um, if you want to know where the money is coming from, following the money trails, yeah. go to 11th Hour Blog, please. Okay. Um, you're kidding, right? Oh, Karen's great. Karen is great. Yeah. Um, I just had to mention a couple of these to make sure that that got out there. Yeah. Oh, and I also want to mention that there is an action in Washington, D.C. on March 8th. Um, And it is not going to be the women's march that has been taken over by trans-identified males. Um, (laughs) It's going to be a picketing of women uh, speaking out, saying no to the executive order that has destroyed women's rights in America. Well, hope, I mean, oh God, hopefully not. I mean, I'm, I've, I still hold out a little bit of hope, Skylar, that, that once the individual states see what's going on, there'll be a fight back, you know? It, 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 I just don't see how a father who sees his daughter's you know, college prospects destroyed by someone uh, beating her on a sports field, I don't see how American men will stand up to it. And I think that, I think that um, ev- eventually, uh, you know, I think one good thing, I, I don't know whether you agree with this, but I think one good thing that's happening in the States at the moment is because of all, because now Trump isn't distracting everyone, I think people will begin to see how insane this ideology is. You know, you know I, homophobic. That President Biden might have done us a favor. Well, that's kind of what I was thinking. I'm wondering if he has. He did out the gate. <laughs> yeah, because it's going to galvanize people. I, I just think that people are going to, are, are not going to just sit, sit as quietly as, as people think they are. You know, they might, they, you know, I think the, the youthful advisors to people like Biden ha- are probably telling him a load of nonsense about how popular all these moves are going to be. And there's going to be a huge pushback, I think. Don't you? I really believe that men and women both. See, I, I, frankly, I have many male allies. Um, when I, when my ride eventually gets to Las Vegas, I'll be staying with a man that has a wife and, and, and two daughters and a son, and I'll be staying there for a couple of days so I can decompress, yeah. um, because by the time I get to Vegas, I'm going to be tired, but we have so many men supporting us. Mm. Um, frankly, what bothers me and what should bother 
any man in America is that the only men that are allowed into our bathrooms and our showers and things are the ones that think they're women and they're the ones that have been actually threatening to rape and kill us. Yeah. Um, the, the men that would protect their wives and their daughters, they're not allowed in those spaces. Yeah. But the predators, and frankly, I will call any man that trespasses past a woman's no predator. Yeah. And women in America are screaming no at the top of our lungs. No, we don't want you in our bathrooms. No, we don't want you in our showers. We don't want you in our sports. We don't want you in our rape shelters. Any of these things. We are all saying no collectively. Yeah. Any man that continues to go into those spaces after a woman says no is a predator. Yeah. And to all of you men out there that think you are welcome in our spaces, stop being a predator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. <laughs> well put. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. it's been a hard week i'm tired <laughs> so um uh so when do you set out skylar june 1st june 1st okay and there'll be i presume um you know social media ways we can stay in touch and and follow and you we are a making a documentary great great okay well um Here's another thing we should try. Once you're once you're on it, let's have another chat and see how it's going. Maybe you can call us from some uh, desert stop in the middle of nowhere or something like that. I'll be happy to speak with you anytime. Oh, thanks, Skylar. It's lovely to speak to you. By the way, ha are you uh, are you with the LGB Alliance America? Yes. Right. Okay. Good. How's that going? Um, frankly, I took a step back because I have been too busy with the ride. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, when I came out and realized that women were under attack from both the left and the right, it turned me into a radical feminist. Yeah. I never was a feminist. I didn't have time to be a feminist. I was too busy trying to survive. Mm. Um, but now I actually joined FIST, Feminist and Struggle. I joined WHRC, I joined WOLF, I've joined every feminist organization I can find in America. Right. Yeah. Because frankly, <laughs> we gotta do something. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, Skylar, I have to say, I'm always looking for reasons to be optimistic and speaking to you gives me another one because <laughs> I just think that, you know, I'd like to see someone go up against you in a, in a, in a in a debate, I would really love to see how they could tell you, uh, you know, that you need to accept men in their spaces and so on. Um, well, I would probably just look at them and just say, you know, no means no, I'm sorry, no, there's no yeah. debate. Well, there is no debate, no means no. Yeah, yeah. When women say no, there's, it's not an open for negotiation. <laughs> We're not telling you we want to negotiate with you about our no, yeah. or when we can say no, or when we can say no. We are just saying no. Well, I'm going to pretend that's a positive way to end the interview because it is. Saying no, I think, when you're under attack is a very positive way to, to end things. Um, Skylar, it's such a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, please let us know any developments either on the way to the ride or during the ride. I'd, lo we'd love, to, I'd love to catch up with you uh, uh, the further along things get. But for the moment, I hope, hope you have a lovely day over there and um, I'll see you online. Thank you for giving women a voice. Oh, stop it. That's silly. That's Feel silly. free to edit with wild abandon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I might keep in that compliment. I might be sneaky and keep in that final compliment. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to put this up. I'm going to just put this up because I think it's a, it's, it's a lovely interview. I don't think there's any, uh, anything to cut out. So, um, so thank you. And uh, yeah, you'll see this up in a few minutes. Send me any links you want me to put in the, in the bottom as well. Oh, awesome. Thank you. And send me the link when it goes up. I will, definitely. Lovely to talk to you, Skylar. Thank you, Graham. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.